Hello, I'm Julia. It is Tuesday the 1st of September and welcome to my garden. What you're about to watch is sort of a little catch up on the things that I've been doing since my last video, sort of from the middle of August to yesterday, the end of August, sort of. <laughs> Perhaps not yesterday. I hope you enjoy watching. I'll apologise now because there are some dodgy bits of camera work shall we say um, but I wanted to leave them in so I'm really sorry fly buzzing around <laughs> so I'm really sorry for bits of wobbles hold on to your seats and you don't fall off uh, <laughs> and then we'll come back here and I'll say bye bye talk to you in a minute Saturday 15th of August It's Saturday the 15th of August. I've just harvested the sweet corn and it's disappointing to say the least. I think when the rains came, everything, nothing could get fertilised. So everything's coming out like this, either halfway fertilised or this one's going to have nothing on it at all. Disappointing. It's Thursday the 20th of August and the tomato harvest is getting bigger every day. We yeah, are actually getting a few French beans, it's so few, but there are a lot on the plants. So we're encouraging more by taking them little. And some red beans that are tending to come in now. They're delicious. These are, uh, look, enorma. And that's a very young bean, so it'll be really tender. It's gonna be lovely. Um, a pile of squash. Another good sized patty pan, quite pleased with those. They always do that at the bottom, you have to get them at just the right time. Some Tondo Chiara de Niza, some Grisette de Provence, some Cooknet yellows, little ones. They're not getting on very well really to be honest. It's been so damp and there's so little air flow through the plants. I've tried to cut out some of the leaves to increase the air flow but I keep getting so far and I'm going to mould this so I am grabbing them while they're young. They're like that, nice like that anyway, they're quite um, pleasant like that. So this lot's going to be made into a tomato sauce and go into the freezer. We have actually got our first of the Pomodoro San Marzano. The first of the San Marzanos and somewhere in here this is the first of, ah there it is, there's two of these, these are the um, <laughs> dwarf, Italian, plum, that one, you know the one I mean, the one we all grow, a little bit yellow there but I'll stick it on the windowsill for maybe a day or two. It'll soon finish ripening up. Um, oh my, why is it not coming to me? I've been getting some of the old tigerellas. It is Saturday the 22nd, I believe, of um, August. <sighs> Raining again. Raining again, and I'm up a ladder. No, I'm not. I'm up some steps under my bean arches. Possibly the only thing they like each other, really. <laughs> Possibly the only thing to be enjoying this wet weather are the runner beans. They're doing pretty good. And actually, also, the Greek Gigantes beans, they're doing pretty good too. 
Mm. And we are I'm harvesting at the moment. I might take that one actually, I was going to leave it to get a bit bigger. Okay. The My favourite runner beans, I planted. Let me get rid of that, put it down in the basket. Drop it down in the basket. I planted two types of runner beans. I planted Armstrong and Enorma. I'll be growing the Enorma again, they're brilliant. You get really long pods, this one's not as long as they get. I've brought them in about a foot long and they're still very young and very tender. Got a bit of sweet pea on it. <laughs> this one's only a tiddler really compared to some of the others. I was going to try and find you one of the really long ones. They're very delicious. A really good flavour. And you get a lot of bean because they grow so long and stay tender. You get a lot of you get a lot of bean for a, for a very young bean, so that's great. So I am getting some harvest amidst all this horrendous weather. Ugh. My poor French beans, not happy in this wet rain. It has literally rained, 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 rained. We've had the odd nice day. We had all that lovely heat earlier on, we had a few nice days together. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember now. It's such a distant memory. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Since then, it's mostly rain with the odd day of sunshine thrown in. It's either chucking it down or it's blisteringly hot. So I've had to start harvesting in the rain. Otherwise, it all goes to waste. I'll show you what I, can get, what I bring in in a moment. See you in a tick. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're inside the polytunnel. It's raining again. I'm in the polytunnel and I've decided I need to do something about that corner. Well, that corner and that corner. I've already done that corner. Those um, cherry... The current, the current tomatoes are out of hand. It's like a jungle back there. And they're not really producing all that much fruit not enough to warrant this amount of growth anyway so what I am going to do I'll show you what I've already done on this one I've thinned it out dramatically I've taken a lot of leaf off it I brought my San Marzano it might send me up a sucker we'll see anyway so I've thinned it out a lot I've taken a lot of leaf out of it let some light in. I've left a lot of flour on it and there's quite there's some fruits on it. They're doing fine. So there's a ripe one, we'll have that in a minute. Right. In there. Okay, so underneath the San Marzanos. So all I'm gonna do is take everything from the top as far as I can above the bar and take out a lot of leaf let's improve the airflow and see how we go on also as I can't find any secateurs I'm going to have to just do it all by hand by nipping out oh it's going to take well it's not going to take that long it didn't take me long to do the other it's just a bit of a squeeze once I get started I'll be okay <laughs> So we have had some atrocious weather around here recently and on Sunday we actually had a dry and sunny day so I took the opportunity to bring in all of the potatoes and this is what we've got. So I think we'll start here. Those are the Aram pilots from the very last tub of them that I never got to bring in and they there was an, a further £3.6 ounces of those. So added to the 14, I think it was 14 pounds and four ounces from the previous three tubs. So that's come to 17 pounds and I think 10 ounces of Aram Pilots. We've got the Charlottes, they're in. Um, there's three bags of Charlottes here. 
four pounds in each of these and two pounds and ten ounces in this one and that comes to 20 no it doesn't <laughs> that's a 10 10 pounds and 10 ounces of charlotte's from four pots one of them had very few in it only one harm came through on that one so i was expecting a low yield but that's not bad at all and then these are the maris pipers these could have done with more time in the ground as you can see some of them are very small there are others in here that are a little bit more of decent sizes but the weather was so wet they didn't get blight but they did die back because it was so wet i think that just too wet in the pot so there's four pens in the back bag and four pens and five ounces in here so that's eight pen five ounces of maris pipers from just three pots i think no two pots of maris pipers so that's not bad at all that um, so that lot comes to a total harvested on Sunday of £22.07, and seven ounces, which added to the £14.04 and four ounces from the previous harvest comes to £36.11 and 11 ounces of potatoes. So that's all right. That's going to keep us going for a little while. I know you're going to be like going, why are they in plastic bags? They're in plastic bags because I put them in the bottom of the fridge and I turn the top outwards to keep them open in the bottom. I put them in the salad drawer and then they stay nice and fresh in there for the whole, most of the winter. Last year's um, potatoes, we've, we only used the last of them in, I think, May or June, something like that, the last few. So these should keep us going for a long, quite a long time. We don't eat that many. I am planning on using, hopefully, some of them. The seed potatoes for next year. I think that would be quite fun. So, yes, potato harvest is in. Hooray! Thank heavens for that. It is Sunday, the 30th of August, and today's harvest has been an actual amount of runner beans that I can make a dinner with. Yum yum! Hurrah! Um, there's a mix of cobra. Um, Costa Violette and Isabel there and then a cabbage can't remember what sort it was but it was a round headed cabbage that went in sort of in the spring some carrots oh golden nugget I've not got any purple ones in there normally there's purple in there as well brought in several onions most of which is sitting underneath the beef which is roasting in the oven right now and then we've got those ones are Mary's Piper, those are going to be um, roasted. And then I've got a few, these are actually Charlotte's, but quite a decent size. So they're going to become a rough mash, so they'll, I'll leave the skins on and I'll do a rough mash with some butter with them. But mixed in with that is going to be the kohlrabi of gorgeousness. So it'll be a kohlrabi and potato mash, and I'm making quite a bit of it because tomorrow I will make um, croquettes with what's left. Uh, and that's, well, I brought in a couple of tomatoes. There's loads more out there, but I just, I brought in the ones that were desperate to be brought in. So that should be good. In with these potatoes, I think I'll probably stick a bit of my garlic. Look at those, I'm still, I'm still loving my garlics. Ho, 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 beautiful. So uh, probably stick a bit of garlic in with them, maybe might put a bit of cream in, or I might just keep it to milk to make it a little bit lighter, but definitely butter. <laughs> Can't do mash without butter, can you? Anyway, that's all the veggies for tonight's tea. There's a massive joint of beef roasting away in the oven. And yum yum dee yum yum. Well, things are going quite well. That was by no means everything that I've done. It has rained so, so much. We've actually got a nice day today, September, Hurrah! doesn't let me down, <laughs> generally. Um, so what I wanted to show you now at the end of the video is I paid a visit to one of our local budget stores that we all know and love who have a massive seed sale in, at the end of August and I went and avail availed myself of said seed sale. I'll try saying that after a glass of wine. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to go through what I bought with you. Um, I did buy these 
in August so that's why I'm including them on this end of August catch up roundup shall we call it an end of August roundup so um, let's have a look what I bought the first two things that are going to come out of this bag are not we're not on set so my garlics I bought Casablanca Casablanca never grown Casablanca before there's three bulbs in that one I think I might have another one of those somewhere in here oh there we are, there we are. I know, this yeah that one's Casablanca as well but I gave my sister two bulbs out of it so I've got four she's got two she's on her own she ain't got uh, and then I have a pack of Germidor and I've never grown those before either and I did buy two packs but again gave my sister one of the packs and the Germidor just have two bulbs in a pack so they were not sale because they are current season everything else in, in here <laughs> was sale I worked out that this haul of seeds should have come to about £78-ish and I paid about £24 for them so a Mange 2P called Norley never grown that before so we'll see how that comes out early cropping, masses of small stringless, tender sweet edible pods uh, uh, compact dwarf habit oh dear I bought without reading I don't really do dwarf but I will do Right, I've got a good spot for them, they'll be fine. Ideal for exposed or windy locations, shows good tolerance to disease, especially that one. <laughs> we'll see how they go. So there's those. Early onward. Well, onward. Oh, they don't they don't grow terribly tall either so I think my early peas are going to be small this year that's okay not a problem I'm not doing those purple mange trees that I did this year the first batch from them were okay the second batch from them were a bit slow on the uptake good old sunflowers obviously but there's several packs of there's quite I've actually bought quite a lot of some of flowers so what have we got here for Giant single says it grows nearly two meters high. Mm -hmm. Titan, mm. don't think I've ever grown Titan before. Doesn't seem to say on this how big they'll grow. Polish Goliath with flower heads. A Goliath with flower heads reaching up to 60 centimetres. Woof! Providing a genuine banquet for hungry bees, butterflies, as well as seed for birds in autumn. So that'll be fantastic. I got two packs of those. Let's see how they go. Uh, two packs of sunburst. Also, should grow, it says, up to. 1.8 meters nearly two meters in height and then this one is called Missoula and it's an F1 and it's a cutting sunflower so these ones I'm going to grow where I can access them easily so that I can cut them and take them into the house and have jolly old sunflowers in the house let's have a look what else we've got oh there's some more that's another giant single excellent Several different types and colours of nasturtium. These are by no means the only ones in this bag. So lots of nasturtium. Courgettes, Tuscany. Hmm. Okay. And a gold, gold rush, gold rush. I've grown gold rush before, and it's a nice, a nice courgette. Zinnias, again zinnias. I like zinnias, they're beautiful. That's a wasp that's come into my, we might have to hold proceedings for a minute until it goes out of my shed. If it comes near me, yeah it's coming near me, sorry halting. Let's start again with zinnias. I love zinnias, they're beautiful. 
they're beautiful. I've never really got them to grow very well here though. I think it's just too darn wet for them, but I'm not giving up. There, I hope it's, hope the light's okay. I've shut the door and it can't come back in again. Okay, so, yeah, I'll give them another go. If they're a bit of a flop next year, then I won't grow them again. Purple kohlrabi, I got two packs of these, I know I did. Anyway, purple kohlrabi, called purple Vienna. Love kohlrabi, I'm a convert to kohlrabi. Delicious stuff. Cosmos, several different sorts of. So this one is Kiro. Tall bushy and highly unusual pale yellow blooms. Lovely. Seashells mixed, which is a beautiful and unusual favourite for summer borders. Looks an awful lot like the double click mix that I grew, I've grown up till now. So we'll see how they come out next year. I think they're just double clicked by another name. And this is Tetra Verse mixed. And they are enchanting, easy to grow and pollen rich border flowers. Okay, so that's flowers. Let's try and keep things together. A <laughs> pumpkin, of course. This one's called Rocket. Great large Halloween variety with sweet, tasty flesh. And I'm hoping that because it's called Rocket, it's going to be quick because I don't have much of a season for up here. Do, do, do. We'll just have to see, shall we? Rocket. What else have we got? Runner beans, Isabel. They're growing quite well this year and they are producing, so I've gone with Isabel again. And then these ones are Cobra. Also, growing really well this year. I'm getting plenty of French beans off these now. They've taken a while to get going because the weather was so wet through um, June and July and August. Not ideal for runner, French beans. So, did I say runner beans before? I meant French beans, the Isabelle French beans as well. So I'm going with Cobra again for next year. First year I grew them, they didn't do very well here, so I thought they were going to be a dud, but I, I planted the seeds anyway just because I had the seeds, but they've done really well. I'm going to be in Armstrong, I'm growing those this year, and I'm happy to grow them again next year. I like them, they're tasty and they're tender. And peas, Hearst Green Shaft, got a couple of packs of those. Um, because I've grown them before and I like them. I, for some reason I didn't grow them this year. I mustn't have had any seeds left and forgotten what I'd grown last year. And then of course my favourite of the runner beans, Enorma, is a fantastic bean. They grow, they, I mean I've been getting them out like over a foot long. Getting them out, I've been picking them over a foot long and they are young and tender when they're that size. And so you get an awful lot of runner bean for your investment in those beans. I think they're great. Of course, Calden Wonder peas, because I like them. I've got them for Johnson's, not Lidl, because I actually really want to be guaranteed my Calden Wonder. Those Lidl peas were fine, they should have just labelled them as a mix, maybe an all season mix, and then you would know you're not gonna get everything all the same. Well, you would know you were not going to get a bag of Calvin Wonders anyway. This year, I know, with this seed brand, I will definitely get Calvin Wonder seeds out of there. That's uh, more of the Mange too. More of the Calvin Wonder. More kohlrabi. Wherever I put the kohlrabi at the back. More Enorma. I have a plan for next year as well for the bean arches. What, oh, Armstrong? They got means, me, aren't they? <laughs> Some new parsnip seeds. These are tender and true, which are growing away very happily in my um, parsnip bed at the moment. So I'm quite happy to, I think they're going to be a success. So quite happy to go ahead with those ones again. 
More nasturtiums. Tall, single, mixed. That's a different one to the others that I think I showed you. Jolly colours, aren't they, nasturtiums? I need to find a better pot for those next year because I don't think they did great this year. Honesty. I was quite excited to find seeds for Honesty. Flowers. Ooh, I'm supposed May, June, July. <gasps> I should be. So I should have sown it already. I'm not waiting till next year to sow it. I'm going to do it now. Oh no, we're a month late. Ugh. If we have an Indian summer, they'll be fine, won't they? I think I'm better off sowing them now. If I want them for next year, I'm going to have to sort them now anyway, aren't I? And this one I've never seen before. Isn't that a funny little flower? <laughs> Sweet Sultan, giant mixed, sen sweetly scented and very easy to grow. Well, that'll suit me well, won't it? <laughs> so we'll see what they're like. They look really pretty. They're pulled to me. Lovely. So they're going to be gorgeous. Pause there. Calendula, of course. I mean, the calendulas that I've got there, out there, I know are self-seeding, but I love this colour. It's so pale. Double flowered pot marigold. Pretty that, ain't it? Very pale. Little temper all the very bright oranges. <laughs> and some phlox night scented. And there was a May, March, April, May sowings. So outdoors. Alrighty then, I will do. And fennel. I've never grown fennel. It's aniseedy, isn't it? So it should be quite fresh. So I think I should like it through salads and things. Maybe with the kohlrabi would be quite nice. Mm. Work on that. So there we go. That's everything. A garlic bowl. Would look, aha, there it is, it's out of that one. It's out of the Casablanca. So, yeah, I gave my sister one bulb then out of Casablanca and a pack of Germidor. That should do her. The garlic that I grew last year, um, the ones that got really big, yum. <laughs> um, I've got three bulbs of those in the bottom of the fridge, uh, protected in the bottom of the fridge, ready to go out in another, where are we now? It's September now, I'll probably put them out in October. Um, give them a chance to get established before the cold weather comes. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So they'll go out. All these will go out. They're going to have a much bigger area next year because garlic I use almost on a daily basis and onions. So I'm going to grow a lot more onions as well. And I'm definitely growing the zebrunas from seed again next year. They seem to be stored drying really well for storage. The Golden Globe shallots that I did, I should have taken them in straight away and just pickled them or something because they didn't really dry very well for me to store them so I won't bother doing those again next year. I'm just going to concentrate on the garlic, the onions and the zebrunas and that'll be fine for alliums apart from some salad onions obviously which I've not used much of to be honest. Some of the little modules, modular things that I planted out are still out there getting quite bulbous I'll get used, I'll cook, cook with them. So that's my um, seed haul. I'm going to sort them all out properly now and get them into the big box that I keep in here. It's quite cool in here so they'll be fine in here and I can make it frost free for through the winter. I'll wrap the whole box up in some bubble wrap or something to keep the frost out of them. So they'll be fine up in here, they'll be better in here than in the centrally heated house anyway. So that ends my mid to end of August roundup. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry about the wobbly camera again. Bad camera work, sorry I'll try and improve. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go out in the garden. I'm going to harvest tomatoes and runner beans and then I'm going to process them all. I'll show you my harvest when I've made it. Basically. I can hear the dogs circling outside as well now. Thank you for watching. It's been my pleasure as always. I'll see you, well, later today, but next time. Bye for now.